All right, guys, welcome back, I think, for some of you, to Rex to Rides, um, where we are still turning your hard-earned cash into broken hearts, unfinished projects. And, uh, yeah, let me, let's me let talk about the V-Strom. Um, this is a bike I found on Marketplace, and uh, I just immediately knew that this was... This was going to be a good candidate for extra rides. Um, and this is the thing with candidates is that it's it's very easy to buy vehicles and fix them. But the challenge is in buying the correct vehicle. It's it's basically got to be pretty much fucked enough for the owner not to want it anymore so you can get it at a good price. But not that fact that it'll cost more than a new one to um repair and yeah this requires a bit of skill a bit of knowledge but mostly just listening to your gut that's what it comes down to so ha, i saw this on marketplace and I, and i said to ingrid bless her soul i said oh we're getting a suzuki hey and she just said car or bike and i said bike and that was it and that was the end of the conversation so huge shout out to ingrid for all her love and support um putting up with my antics and shit with all of this. I think she enjoys it more than I do. But anyway, um, very, very special person who's just been 100% support throughout all of this. And yeah, so I saw this on, on Marketplace and we went to go and look at it and he said, ah, oh, crack casing or whatever and blah, 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 leaking oil. So we picked it up and went to have a look and basically there, there was quite a bit wrong with it. Uh Underneath here, your front chain, your chain comes through, sits on a front sprocket here and goes back. He'd recently had the chain and sprockets replaced, and the guy didn't put the retaining nut on properly. And that had come awful. He didn't even put it on, period. And um, what happened was the count, the sprocket had moved forward, and the counter shaft collar had come out, and it was leaking oil. But it started straight up, and, uh, yeah, he said, no, there's... 20,000 Ks on the clock and blah, 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 blah. Um, which I knew wasn't true because uh, the front fork was leaking oil. And uh, front forks don't leak well after 20,000 Ks. So, yeah, uh, I thought, well, it's probably a bit of a higher mileage, but let's take a look. And what we've essentially got was this bike has been in an accident somewhere along the line. Front wheel buckled, back wheel's got a bit of a ding. Um, and obviously the fork seal, the other fork, the inner tube has been replaced and chromed. So we know there was that. This, uh, all the fenders, all the plastic had been resprayed, badly resprayed. The clocks weren't working, the headlights weren't working. And that was it. So we picked it up for 14 and um, Turns out there's a power supply that goes to the clocks, just one cable. It was, I would say, a medium to advanced auto electrical fix, as it was in the connection, but the connection inside the plastic block had broken, and so not very easy to detect. You have to go through your wiring diagrams, you find out, start tracing wiring, and nonetheless, clocks are working 100%. No error codes, everything's good. And the lights weren't working. Uh, it was a cable coming, supplying. It's very weird, auto electrical cable coming from there backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards, fuse boxes, everything. Basically, a connection that supplies the switch with the power, which then goes to the lights, was connected wrong as the old connection had burnt. So, yeah, we kind of hit it. You can see there's needs a bit more polishing here we did all the plastics the tank everything with uh starting off with a thousand two hundred paper to flatten it you know it's one thing to spray it but you still have to flatten and polish it afterwards um so you start off with a thousand two hundred paper and got most of the scratches and orange peel off and then a thousand five hundred two thousand then i like to use sp6 um that flattened and cleaned that up nicely got a second hand seat because the old seat had a tear in it so and i picked up this top box which is a bit big um i'm not too fond of uh 
panniers. I mean, I like panniers. You can fit a lot of cock in, and if your bike falls over, it's 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 quite a bit of protection. But you also can't really filter because it makes the bike substantially wider on both sides. And, um, you know, you try to get through cars, you're going to clock them from time to time. Never a good thing. Uh, so, yeah, currently we got the top box. This is an old Honda one. I think it came off a Goldwing or some shit because it's massive. But it's it's pivotal for me to ride around with all the cock that I have to do. You know, mostly going to go and see clients and all that. But... Yeah, it works. Um, so that's all good, and and I must say, you know, this this being our first Suzuki, that that wasn't closed properly. Let's try that again. Always check that. I thought let's have a, a look. Oh yeah, we got this whole new tailpiece, and uh, it was in a lot better nick than this one was. So hit that with a blowtorch. And I think it's come out quite nicely. The lights all working. Um, so what's it like? At the moment, we haven't hit much of a speed because the fork seals have been done. Um, everything's done. The sprocket's done. The, it's a new oil oil filter. The found a reasonable mechanic who's well. Let's let's see how let's fix the uh, bash plate and 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 loads of little things, you know. Um, so we still got a bit of a buckle in the front wheel. It goes, but um, you really don't want to go very high speeds with that because it will just vibrate. And um, yeah, so we've tried this two up. It was a bit of fun, but I got to tell you, for some reason, they I didn't even know Cowley made pipes for bikes, but this is a bloody free flow, so it sounds fantastic. And comparing, I had a Transalp. Um, you know, you can't really compare apples to guavas i suppose um but the 650 adventure style bike the last one i had was the honda transalp and um and you know i found that to be a bit dull i went from a 250 ninja to that and you know they had a similar top speed and and that the transalp just had a little bit more gut uh, guts to it and it wasn't that significantly better than than a 250 ninja I think mostly because the Ninja's an inline two-cylinder, so you can get higher RPMs. It's a lot more fun. Um, this is a V12, a V2, V12, I wish. And um, so similar to the Transalp. And i got to tell you, there are two things that stand out to me. The gearbox is a lot better. The gearbox is a lot smoother. It's a lot less clunky than the Honda. I used to struggle a lot with the Honda's gearbox, especially getting it into neutral shifting gears. You, you're you not going to get past it out, you know, preloading your shifter and, and all that cuck. This just shifts very smoothly and it's grunt. Man, this thing's got grunt. It's got pull. So, so far I'm quite happy with it. Um, this is, what do we do with the keys? Keys are gone. Great. Fantastic. Um, I'm sure we'll find them somewhere. Here they are in my pocket. And you, you really, you've got to listen to this. It fires up. I'm just going to put this down here. Just listen to that. That really sounds good. Give it a little bit of stick. That is a very angry sounding bike. I love it to bits. So, so far, yeah, we, we are still sitting under 20,000 Rand budget. And what's the fun of fixing these things on a limitless budget? So, we're well, under 20 grand to get this. Oh, that's the other thing. When I did get the clocks working, it read 109,000 kilometers. So, I asked a bit around on the Suzuki groups, you know, is this thing worth worth even fixing 107 and everyone said these motors go on forever so yeah i'm starting to see why suzuki is that much more expensive than than the rest because i must tell you before this the only bike i've never had cock with never ever ever even the g310 has gone in because the shifter i had 20,000 k's the shifter return spring is broken you know that's 
that's a new bike really at 20,000 and and yeah it's in for repairs already so you know quite frankly as far as I'm concerned if you wanted a a bike you're never going to have cock with get yourself a Kawasaki um but so far I'm I'm leaning towards Suzuki quite a bit and starting to really enjoy it I think this is something Detlef would have enjoyed this bike I think um adventure bikes cruisers being more his thing so yeah rest in peace to him and um yeah and a, again a huge shout out to ingrid for all her support and we've got this so we're just waiting for the bmw to come back and uh then we'll send this in for the rim straightening we'll probably be on a total of about twenty one thousand all in including all the purchase the spare parts the registration the everything and it's not bad for a 20 grand bike anyway guys have a good day bye